Frontier Fighters. Frontier Fighters, the amazing adventures of fearless pioneer men and women who fought and conquered the West. To those whose senses still throb to the memory of Pike's Peak Rush, Colorado is indeed a homeland, one from the red man and nature. In 1857, some Cherokee Indians brought the word 600 miles across desert waste and mountains to Iowa that a little gold and silver had been found near Pike's Peak. Among those who immediately went in search of an easy fortune and didn't find it were D.C. Oaks, Jack Jones, and William Green Russell of Iowa. These leaders, together with a handful of people, decided that this land, 600 miles from nowhere, must have a name. It should be a state and admitted to Congress. Uh, they're laughing at us in Washington. Hey, there ain't 500 people in the whole 600 miles, counting the braves and squaws. You're forgetting the papooses, Tom. They sure swell the population. <laughs> just a minute, just a minute. This meeting is getting a little out of hand here. Yeah. All right, man. Let's listen a while now to Trader Jack Jones. All right. It's true, I reckon, that we're 600 miles from nowhere in the Pikes Peak country, but it's beginning to fill up. <laughs> oh, shut up, Tom. Over at our area on the west side, of Cherry Creek, they got 200 settlers. Five women, bless them. On the east side of Cherry Creek, there's St. Charles. That ain't St. Charles anymore, Jack. What's that, Oaks? We went in there this morning and found just some teepees and Indian traders. So we took it over and named it Denver in honor of Governor Denver of Kansas. <laughs> I guess things move pretty fast out here at Pikes Peak. Well, anyway, I'm for giving this whole country a name. Getting it organized into a territory and send a representative to Congress. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go there on the map. Yeah, they've got to admit us into the union. How about a name for this yeah, territory? I'm for naming it in honor of the man who put over the Louisiana Purchase. A strip of land 600 miles from nowhere will now be the territory of Jefferson. Yeah. Hey, Jones, what's on your mind, Oaks? Just to be on the safe side, I'm for creating a county of Arapaho, which will include the whole of western Kansas and send a representative to the Kansas legislature. Then, we've got representation one place or the other. Good idea! Oh, good idea. Good idea. Good idea. Good idea. Good anyway. How are we going to get more people to come out here to Denver, in the territory of Jefferson? I'm leaving for home next week. I'll get out a pamphlet and spread it all over the country, from the Missouri River to the Atlantic coast. If anybody can put that over, it's the man standing right there, D.C. Oak. Yeah, oh, so do it. I can put over this gold rush, which is dying on its feet, and a land boom, too. I can make Denver a real city and the territory of Jefferson a state. <laughs> In such a fantastic manner was the territory of Jefferson, later to become Colorado, organized. And thus did Denver come into being as a city. D.C. Oaks was as good as his word. Immediately upon his return to Iowa, he issued a pamphlet entitled it Pike's Peak Journal. Oaks, with that highly colored pamphlet, unwittingly set off a keg of dynamite that was already in primed. The people of the states fairly ate up the news to be found in the Pike's Peak Journal. To those who got in too late on the California gold rush, it looked like the promised land. In different parts of the country, people called such exaggerated rumors as these from the press. Land sake, Henry, look at this. Ridges of gold circle Pike's Peak like the stripes on a barber's pole. 
Look here, darling. It's a miracle. The miners slid down Pike's Peak in boats, and the blades in the bottom braces planed off the gold, which curled up in shavings inside the boat. So lay below, let me see quick. And by the time the foot of the peak has been reached, a boat might gather a ton of the gold shavings. They have arrived in Lawrence and Leavenworth and Council Bluffs and St. Joe, barrels of gold from Pike Peak Mine. D.C. Oaks, with a little fact and much fancy, had done his work well. 40,000 made the trek in 49 to California, but in 59, 150,000 set out for the Pikes Peak gold fields. The jumping off points of Leavenworth, Kansas, St. Joseph, Missouri, and Council Bluff, Iowa, were jammed with wagons and carts bearing signs like these. I've sure got a good name for my wagon. It's Pikes Peak or Bust. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going you one better, partner. Ruth, hug, or die! <laughs> Mind. What do you call it, Lou? Uh, lightning Express. <laughs> Once it was up from Naples to America for a Tony. Now he's a go from Pike to County to Pike to Peak. <laughs> In March, the wagon trails across the plains were lined with optimistic, eager gold seekers whose numbers daily swelled into many thousands. Shortly after May 1st, wagons going west met wagons returning east. People were leaving the mines. Some said it was a trick to get people out there to buy goods and worthless land. Others, the pamphlet of D.C. Oaks was filled with lies. They'd been cheated and swindled. Suddenly, the wagon stopped in mid-trail. A scout had sighted Oaks with a train of prairie schooners coming west. In a moment, peaceful, law-abiding citizens became a reckless, infuriated mob. I'm for hanging them when we catch them. Hanging's too good for a varmint like that. Uh, you can't take the law into your hands like this. If you string him up, it'll be a murder. Well, I sure like to let her at tombstone. Here lies the body of D.C. Oaks. Killed for aid in the pipe's fake hope. Right. There comes his wagons now. There comes the fake. Now, come on, man. Right. Pull up your horses, Oaks. Your game is up. Yeah, where's the gold that can just peel off a pipe's feet? Get yeah. down off in that wagon, Oaks. You're going to answer a lot of questions. Oh, Say you got me confused. I don't understand what you're all turning back well, for. Well, there ain't no gold. Oh, but I've got a sawmill here in my wagon. I'm going to put money in Pikes Peak country. I'm staking everything I've got. I'm still of a notion to string them up and investigate afterwards. Yeah, you've got to have faith in a new country. I never said you'd find gold in the streets. If the papers lied, it's not my fault. He's yeah. sure enough got his sawmill in here. Oh, let him go on. If it's bad, it'll be bad for him, too. Come on with me. I'll show you where the gold is. The territory of Jefferson's got a future, I tell you. Denver will be a great city. Better get along, Oaks, before we change our minds. This time. Get on, you faker, you. And when you ride home, don't you dare tell the folks you found gold growing on trees. Oh, well, let's see. Get up. Get up. Pike's Peak a bus. Guess we can put that motto in mothballs for many a day to come. <laughs> Some of the 150,000 turned back. Some stayed. A few farmed. Some became storekeepers. Others mined enough gold and silver to eke out a bare living. But thousands waited, still clinging to the last straw of hope that somebody, somewhere, would discover a mother load. But Denver, that new miracle city of the West, continued to thrive. On May 6, 1859, 8,000 feet high in the Rocky Mountains, John Gregory accidentally discovered a gulch with the richest quartz seen by any miner of his day. The first pan yielded half an ounce of pure gold. Hooray! This is the stuff. This mountain's full of it. Uh, better pan another run of it, just to make sure. Well, I'll take no need to try that, but it makes you happy. Here it goes. There she is. Another eight-dollar pan. Well, we're rich! The news spread like wildfire. Denver and Auraria were emptied in the short span from sundown to sunrise. But who this time would take the news east that people would believe? Fate sent none other than Horace Greeley, famous roving correspondent for the New York Tribune, who addressed the first mass meeting in the Rocky Mountains. Ladies and gentlemen, partners, 
I give you the man who's going east and tell them the truth. That uh, uh, great and uh, uh, wonderful editor and uh, uh, writer and our friend, Mr. Horace Greeley. Friends, I can go back east and tell them the truth about this gold rush. I've seen with my own eyes gold and oyster cans and buckskin sacks coming out of the mountains. The east needs your gold, the west needs supplies. Gold is a fine slogan, but I'll give them one better, especially for the youth of the nation. I'll tell them, if they want a future, want to grow up with a new country, to go west, young man, go west! Go west, young man, was more than just advice. It became a battle cry taken up by youths all over the land. It was more. Late in 1859, the gold production was 500,000. By 1860, it jumped to 3,250,000. Denver and our area united to become Denver City, the queen city of the plains. Then came one of the most eventful years in the history of Denver, 1863. Mrs. Middleton, whose husband was the half-owner in the lumber firm of Middleton and Wagner, one night awakened her husband. Seth, Seth, wake up. Wake up, Seth. Uh, what's that? Indians. Can we begun? Uh, Seth, it's not Indians. I think there's a fire somewhere about. I'm proud if I can hear the crackle. Uh, sounds like it. Mother, it's in our lumber yard. Oh. And look, the flames are spreading like wildfire to other buildings. Oh, I'll get into this dirt. Uh, there. oh, oh, there's the bell in the square. You better hurry, Mother. we in a minute to be lost. side of the town's gone. Oh, the Lord have mercy on us. All the houses and stores were wooden and dry as tinder. Burned to the ground. Everything we owned gone up in smoke. Everything except our hope. When they build Denver a new state, we'll build with them. Build with them. On what? Seth, dear, on faith. <laughs> Not alone did the Middletons build on faith, but every soul in East Denver. For no sooner had they rebuilt from the disastrous fire when a flood completely destroyed the city. Many believed the last day was at hand and that they were being called to judgment. But such sturdy stock as had originally founded Denver survived fire, flood, famine, and Indian attacks. Then came the proudest day in Denver's life. On August 1st, 1876, Colorado was saluted as a state of the Union and Denver a famous historical city. And so, another thrilling chapter is enacted in the lives of famous frontier fighters of the rugged West. 